which I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you the power usage and the internet usage of the Eight Sleep Pod. All right, welcome to the Eight Sleep Review. Finally here and it's time. We're gonna talk about the app. We're doing it. Welcome to Shervin Shares, his thoughts and beliefs on things. All right, wow. So I got the official big boom light set up here. I've got a backlight, a fill light, backlight. And this is the main light, fill light, whatever. This has been long awaited, the eight sleep pod long-term review. I've been sleeping on it for a little over 60 days, 70 days maybe. And now I have some thoughts on how the app works, uh, the comfortability of the bed, uh, the heating cooling system, and the sleep tracking system as well. And so I'll walk you through all those things, the things that I love, the things that I dislike, and then kind of the extra content that everyone's been asking for. Um, but yeah, well, well, let's do a quick walkthrough through the app. So I've got my phone here. We're gonna pop it on the screen. Ready, one, two. Eight sleep, here it is. So when you open up the app, you're going to see this eight sleep. Uh, it usually says smart temp right now. My bed is on because it's almost bedtime. Uh, and it sets it to negative 10 for the coolest possible setting. It can go all the way to plus 10. Um, and then my smart temp has been adjusted, I think, automatically by the system where it goes to negative 10 and then minus two for the rest of the, e the evening. I have my bedtime set, as you can see here. Um, and I, I think the smart temp figures it out. I remember initially I put it to minus four, two, two, and now it's minus 10, two, two. Um, and you can have a left and a right. I don't have someone on the left side of the bed. And then it's got menu options on the bottom. So we can go ahead and see my sleep stats. It gives me a sleep fitness score, your score breakdown with the time you slept, your wake up consistency within your goal. I don't know how it picks the goal. Uh, time to fall asleep, under 30 minutes. Time to leave bed, you want it to be, I think, under four minutes. Uh, and then what time you got in, what time you fell asleep, and then what time you got out of bed. And then your sleep stages, obviously, tosses and turns, which is pretty cool. Your heart rate, average, min, and max. Respiratory rate, how many breaths per minute. Uh, and then the bed surface temperature. And you can actually edit the sleep session if you feel like it's incorrect. So it does all this data and information for every day. I think I can click through and you can kind of see the yellow, 100%. You can easily get 100%, I guess. And it's got different levels for each day, depending on how much I slept. Uh, if I woke up within a one hour time frame that I usually do. And then on the third tab, you have your trends. So this was a new update to the app that they added, which is the trends. Uh, they'll show you your trend of your sleep fitness score. This is for days. Uh, the time you slept, were you within that uh, seven to nine hour time frame? Your wake up consistency, are you able to be within the same one hour average? How long it took you to fall asleep? Time to leave bed, blah, blah, blah. It's got trends literally for everything. So you can go ahead and see how does it change over time. You can see it over weeks. Oh, that's nice. Before, I think when you used to hit things, it used to refresh the whole page, but now it stays. I can see it over months and it stays on this page, May, June, July. And then the final one is your alarm. You hit the alarm um, and you can set your alarm for the next day, whether you want it cold, none, or warm. You can have it vibrate your phone, it plays music. I think that's the one I have it set on. So it'll play that when I wake up and it's got a couple different options. It's almost bedtime, but I'm shooting this video. Uh, so I'll save that. And then one of the downsides I think is alarm. It requires you to keep your phone plugged in, connected to Wi-Fi. Uh, and it, you have to set the alarm every single night. So if you don't set it the night before, then it won't work. So I hit got it. So I always now have a backup alarm on my iPhone. I use the bedtime feature on here and I make sure to have a secondary alarm wake me up just in case, just cause I might forget to set it on eight sleep. So one thing I wish they had is a notification maybe before I'm going to bed, like, hey, it's bedtime from eight sleep. Uh, Want to set your alarm for the next day. So you have to set your alarm every single day. For what well, I think the main reason is iPhone, you need to just reopen the app. But I wish you could just have the alarm set where if I wanted to heat at 7.30, it would heat the bed at 7.30 to wake me up. And it's all your preference. So back to the H Sleep app. Top left, you've got your menu options. You can see account, settings, pod installation video, ambient sounds, so you can fall asleep to ambient sounds. You can connect it with a, your smart home, if this, then that integration. 
Uh, I did not connect it with that. There's a smart temp guide you can go through and take the quiz. It's science two, we have your back, what levels feel like, and I'll tell you right now that the cool and the hot are pretty good. They're, they're very strong. Um, once my mom came and I had her sleep on the bed and I put it to very hot because she sleeps cold and she was like, this is sweating. Like I, she got out of bed and was sweating. I was like, can you please turn it off? So it's very strong. It can make it very hot and very cool. When it's on cool mode, I can feel the coolness actually on the bed, which I do love about it. Uh, and then it can, you can have it change the temperature during your different phases of sleep. And there's a whole quiz that you can take. Settings, you can invite a partner. You can adjust the brightness of the hub light so the pod has a little light. Um, and then the priming, I think every 60 days you actually have to reprime it, which means you have to fill it up with more water and have it uh, flood the water through the entire system. This is what it looks like when you need a prime. Uh, I got a your water level is low. Uh, and then if you scroll, it'll tell you, all right, you need to add more water. Once you add more water, you can still use the pod so it'll heat and cool, but it'll be priming at the same time. And I think you have to do this every 60 days to make sure that the water content stays in there. I assume it, it evaporates slowly over time. The things I do love about it is you don't have to wear anything for it to track your sleep. You can just hop in bed and hop out and it automatically tracks your sleep, your body temperature, how many times you tossed and turned, not your body temperature, but the bed temperature, uh, your sleep stages, and you're not wearing anything. It does it automatically from the smart sheet that's on the actual bed itself. Uh, it has Apple Health integration, so it puts all the information into your Apple Health. Um, the cooling feature is powerful, especially when it's really hot. Um, I live in Denver, so it doesn't get that hot, and I, I don't think I really need it, but it's just nice to have to have that cooling feature. Um, and it's just very strong, the cool and the heat. Uh, battery died, but we're back. It feeds all the data from your sleep into Apple Health, so you can use that information in other apps that you might want. Um, whether they can take that sleep data and infer other things from it and you just have that content recorded securely on your iPhone. I don't like about it, like I mentioned, you have to start the alarm every single night. I wish it would just, even if I didn't have the noise to wake me up on the phone, it was just the bed would warm up at 7.30 a.m. Monday to Friday. I would love that feature. Um, <clears throat> right now when you get notifications for sleep statistics, so like if it looks like this and I tap the sleep statistics that I get every morning, it opens up into the home page of the app and I have to actually tap the dashboard icon to be able to see that data. So I just don't understand why it doesn't automatically go there. One of the issues is like the load times, like as you can see here now, it's loading the sleep data. And if I go to the previous week, there's a little bit of a load. And if I hit, let's say this day and I'm scrolling down, I'm like, okay, uh, I'm looking at my heart rate. My average heart rate is 57. I want to compare it with the day before. I tap Wednesday and now I'm back at the top, which is a little frustrating. Now I have to scroll all the way down and then I can see, okay, 52, go to the next day. So that's frustrating, but they do have the trends tab. So if I do go to trends, I can go ahead and see my heart rate for those days. But I just wish if I wanted to see like two days without having to go to this tab now. So how can they combine these? And then I got to open them. Um, Average heart rate, there it is. And even here, you can't see the numbers. If I, yeah, I don't know. I just know that there's a slight trend above 60. I don't know the exact numbers, even if I hover or tap. So that's a little frustrating. I can't see the exact data. I can just see kind of overall trends. If I want to see exact data and hop from day to day, I have to scroll all the way down. One of the biggest issues I think that I have with it is the bed firmness. I think it's great if you sleep on your back, but I'm a side sleeper, so I've noticed that I wake up a lot in the middle of the night and I roll over to the other side, and I'm constantly switching sides because my arm will fall asleep when I'm on my side. Uh, it's, it's like medium firm, which is a little too firm for a side sleeper, uh, and I don't think I'd recommend it for side sleepers, but if you sleep on your back, I think it's a great bed. It's not like super soft like a memory foam, but it's, it's a mattress. There are sometimes some program errors. Let's say you're trying to set an alarm, it might throw an error, but it still shows that the alarm was turned on and I think they're updating these with the app. So that's always good to see. Um, but sometimes I'll look at it and it looks like the alarm is on, but it won't go off. So for example, this morning actually, my eight sleep noise alarm didn't go off, but I think it heated the bed. And that was a little frustrating, but I woke up for my secondary iPhone alarm. So just make sure that you always use your iPhone alarm. I feel like I can always trust that and Apple does place restrictions on what the apps can do, so that's potentially why it didn't work. 
Um, another big thing is the daily score. So that as you, when you open up the app under trends, you have like a daily sleep fitness score. And I also do wear an aura ring. So as you can see here, aura ring, aura ring. And I've noticed that the data on this ring correlates a lot with how I feel. So if the numbers sleep fitness score on this ring is pretty high, I usually feel pretty good. When it's low, I don't feel as good and it correlates with how I feel. Whereas inside of eight sleep, the numbers don't really correlate with how I feel and I've noticed I just ignore the numbers now. I don't even look at the data just because I feel like it hasn't impacted my morning or my day. So that's just something that my personal perspective, I'm not sure what data points they're using to create the sleep fitness score, like how they're averaging it out. But from what I've learned, it's it doesn't tie to how I feel in the morning. And if there was like a sleep journal portion where you could see like how you feel each day, it'd be cool to use that to kind of figure out those trends. The aura ring doesn't have that either, which I wish they did. So I wish they did this for the alarm where you could have bedtimes, you would have wake times, and it would just have temperatures for those wake times irregardless of any alarm sound. That would have been really convenient. So yeah, that's kind of the eight sleep, my thoughts, my loves, and my dislikes. Um, and I did the app walkthrough for you guys. I'm gonna show you a couple other interesting facts. So I use an app, which I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you the power usage and the internet usage of the eight sleep pod. So I bought one of these V-Sync thing because someone commented on YouTube, they wanna see the power usage. And here's the eight sleep pod. I can tap that and you can see kind of the energy that it's pulled, 123 volts, 4.2 kilowatts, 130 watts, and over about a week, about 18 cents, 1.67 kilowatts, according to the average Denver kilowatt cost. Uh, over a month, about $1.50. This is all dependent on your pricing of electricity at your place. And then over the year, so the lifetime that I've had this, which is about 70, 80 days maybe, uh, $3.80. So if I do a month, let's say $1.50, $1.50, $1 multiply that by 12, that's almost like $17, $18 a year, $18 a year for power alone, just for the pod. And I think at one point they mentioned about a subscription. I don't know what happened with that. I never got charged, I never got an email. They posted about it on the website. But I don't know what happened. Next thing, internet usage. How much data and content is the H Sleep Pod sending, uploading, downloading? Obviously, it's gonna upload a lot more data. I use Google Wi-Fi, and luckily for me, it gives me that data and I can see kind of in real time. So right now, the H Sleep Pod is actually sending data. Not a lot, but it's some data. I can go into details. So I'm gonna come and change it. So let's say just for today, about 23 megabytes downloaded, 381 megabytes uploaded. And I can actually go into the past 30 days and you can see it's uploaded 11 gigabytes of data and downloaded 661 megabytes of data. That's all sleep data, I guess, <laughs> that it's uploading. Um, and I think part of the reason the load times are slow on the app for your data is that it's on the cloud and they're just pulling it from the internet. I don't know why they don't cache it on the phone. And I might be wrong, maybe they do. But there it is. Last 30 days, last seven days, so in a week, about 2.2 gigabyte upload. So if you do have like gigabyte upload limits or just limits on your internet, keep this in mind. 11 gigabytes total upload in 30 days. Like that's a lot of data. Okay, if you're wondering if like these stats are real here, I got another screenshot from May 11th to June 9th. Same thing, 11 gigabyte upload, 774 megabyte download. So more downloading that time, they probably optimized the whole what kind of information they need to download or it was when I was setting it up and it, they needed to download software updates. But the same amount of upload in that month, uh, 2.6 gigabyte upload in, in seven days in June. To be honest, I think I'm gonna return it. There's a 100 night trial and it's just too firm for me. I love the cooling feature and I, the sleep tracking feature is kind of okay for me, but the firmness, I just, I can't, I can't get a good night's sleep. I need something softer, something I can lie on my side on and feel comfortable with. Here are the emails that I exchanged with 8sleep in terms of how the return works. I sent them three times my address and then they sent a company called Go Load Up to come and pick up the mattress. I have it all ready to go. It's kind of like hanging out way back there and they're going to come pick it up. I don't know what they'll do with it. I'll ask them. Maybe I'll try to record that. Sending this off. <laughs> all right, load up checklist done. 
That's how the turn process works. They pick up the three things, the pod, the water base cover thing, and then the mattress itself. Um, I love that people were asking about the power and the internet thing, and I looked into that and I bought the little device to be able to track the power, and I was able to use Google Wi-Fi to see the data content, which is pretty crazy, 11 gigabytes in 30 days. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it provided some value for you. If you did like this video, subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna keep creating content around um, bio tracking devices. I'm gonna do one on the Aura Ring. I'm gonna compare the data uh, on the same exact week with the Aura Ring, the Eight Sleep app, and another app that I use, Pillow. Comment below what was like one thing that you got away from this video. Follow me on Instagram, at shriven.yoga. You can DM me, message me questions. I'll be more than happy to answer them. Other than that, enjoy your day. See you next week. Next video. Peace. This is how legends are made. It's time for bed. I need to go to bed.